Good morning, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Uh, Sorgatron.com is a good morning podcast. Please subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, all the above. And of course, check out everything else we're doing at Sorgatron.com. And if you like today's show, you'll probably really like AwesomeCast.net, our weekly podcast talking about technology, because today I'm going to be talking about Microsoft. Big, big, big event happening just yesterday uh, on the Wednesday uh, here. Uh, what? Well, I don't even know what the date is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Windows, Windows and Microsoft is is uh, kind of coming around. I can't remember the last time Microsoft's been a loved company. It's like, oh, I'm excited about that Microsoft thing, you know, except for maybe in the Xbox, right? The Kinect. The Kinect was innovative. I remember just being blown away when they presented it at E3. And it seems like it's been a while since we had something like that. The closest I've seen is uh, The Verge and Josh Topolsky had a kind of walkthrough of Microsoft's R&D department. And you got to see a little glimpse a couple years ago uh, through that of, of what kind of stuff Microsoft was kind of experimenting with. There were prototype phones and devices, and, and, and we've seen a few years ago... Um, this projector system they were going to attach to an Xbox that would basically extend your screen out onto your wall. Well, yesterday, of course, we got our our, our typical barrage of of Windows and, and what we're going to get there and, and what does Windows 10 mean. And, and even in that case, I think they're coming around on a lot of stuff. Um, they're going to... Uh, one, they're, they're addressing concerns like everybody had about Windows 8. Uh, your start menu looks like a start menu. It looks a lot like Windows, uh, like the next step from a Windows 7, perhaps. Um, and it's going to be free for the first year. Now, listening to Windows Weekly, they're kind of parsing that a little bit of so what does that mean. Uh, basically, if you have Windows 7 or Windows 8, uh, you have a year after the commercial release of Windows 10 to decide to upgrade. And you'll get all the updates and everything, and you just, uh, from the sounds of it, just convert it up, which is tremendous. And a great battle against um, what's going on with Apple, uh, fighting the, the free Chrome, app, Chrome OSs and Androids and, and, uh, and Ubuntus and whatever else people are using on desktops these days. Um, and that's right, and people are using Android on, on d desktops. Touchscreens usually, but desktops. Um, but in this case, and, and they're also saying if you have a Windows 8 phone, you're going to be upgraded. Very, very interesting, uh, very important, because they had issues with, um, they had issues with an early version. If you were one of the first adopters of a Windows phone, you got left in the dark. Um, there, I remember there was a cutoff one. I don't know if it was 7 to 8, and I'm sure somebody's going to scream at me to correct this. Um, but there was definitely a, a cutoff of... Which was a big error, I think, when it came to early uh, new Windows mobile uh, reboot kind of devices. But anyways, uh, Cortana, which is, uh, I'm hearing more and more of it, have not been able to use it too much. And, and by the way, on a side note, I, I think the Windows phones are some of the most gorgeous phones they have out there as far as uh, what that screen looks like. Um, these Nokia phones are, are, are really good. Um, uh, Ron Krause had one here a couple weeks ago on AwesomeCast. I, I've seen, I've only seen it in the wild a couple of times, but every time I do, I'm very impressed by it. Big screen, colorful. I love that interface. I, I still go with that's the one you give your grandma or you know give give somebody who's not very technically inclined. And now that window sounds like it's going to kind of push that across. And, and I'm curious also. Um, I'm sure Windows will have a bevy of problems as it normally does. It has the Windows problems. Um, this may be just a new gloss of paint on top of Windows as you know it, and we're just kind of covering it up. Um, interconnectivity with Xbox was another big thing announced that, that you know, I'm sure is going to be a big discussion with the guys over at InsertCoinToBegin.com. You know, I, I, and I found myself wondering, okay, they've separated Xbox. It runs on a Windows kernel, and that's where it stopped, right? Um, what, what is keeping them? And I know there's probably a lot of technical issues and everything. What is keeping them from just saying, I have an Xbox game disc and I can stick it in my Windows PC and it will work? It's the same base. It's using DirectX. I know it's probably a special version of DirectX for that hardware that they have in an Xbox 360 One, the original Xbox. 
but still it feels like that should make sense. They announced a lot of cross compatibility as in you can chat, like a lot of the social features are coming over, so you'll have an Xbox app to begin with, and you'll be able to see everything and see your games and everything, and I believe a form of, of Xbox streaming. Now we've already had kind of PlayStation doing a similar thing where you can, uh, your, your PlayStation 4 will sit there and it'll stream it to your PS Vita, uh, the PlayStation TV, been looking at this PlayStation TV for some of the, some of the uh, backwards uh, uh, games subscription options lately. Uh, I've been really kind of talking that up. Um, and this is a great extension. And, and again, why haven't they leveraged? Why haven't they leveraged in, in over 10 years now? Hey, we have this thing. We have this new platform with the Xbox. Why don't we make it compatible or link it in some way to all of these Windows computers out there? It, it, instead, we got to create this whole other Windows Live thing that sort of acts like this, but in a really butchered way. It just doesn't make sense. Um, some other stuff coming out of this. Internet Explorer is is apparently given way to uh, codenamed Project Spartan. It's going to be a new version of, of, of a web browser for Windows, I guess. Um, looks pretty slick. Uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll see more about that. Uh, OneDrive is going to be very prominent. Um, and just they are saying your PC is now your Xbox, according to The Verge here. Um, but I'm wondering how much that means. Again, I, I haven't dove too much into this part of the presentation uh, because I, I I'm here to announce that with Windows 10, I'll talk about in a minute here that I think may be a game. Show off one of my you know, favorite me, games, I, Forza I'm Horizon 2. You see it in my recently played games list here. Um, so now I've already set up a relationship between this Surface. Of, and my Virtual Xbox reality, One in my home. I do reality, that one time. That the um, Xbox I'm app, very Xbox. Interested in. And that is Project Hollow. Project Hollow? Hollow. <laughs> what are we calling this now? Um, but it's a big headset. It's going to look goofy. This isn't a thing that you're going to wear around like Google Glass to the bar and get in trouble. Um, this goes around your head. Apparently, there's a lot of speakers. There's a lot of processing power. You can look through these lenses, so you don't see anything any differently there. But the big, the big thing that you see, holograms. I did not expect to hear holograms from Microsoft. Um, basically, you look through here, and they showed demos of Minecraft. Now we know why they bought not Minecraft, because this could be the killer feature. Uh, some of these articles, I believe one of these, uh, Verge Polygon, uh, was talking about uh, my, Minecraft might be the free cell of this device. Supposedly, free cell, uh, uh, rumor is, uh, folklore is, free cell was left on your Windows computers as a free app as a way to get people used to using a mouse. Makes sense, doesn't it? If you're using that, you're, you're clicking on the cards, you're dragging it, and you got to think about, what, we're talking about 20 years ago uh, when Windows 3.1 became prominent. You were going from a lot of keyboard action kind of stuff with DOS. Um, and that's really when the mouse kind of came into its own. I know it's been around a little bit before that. Um, and even, I guess, earlier ver versions, they, they probably even had free cell too. But um, but th that's the thing that got you used to using this little thing that used to have a ball on it. And now it doesn't anymore. Um, but you can see that Minecraft is something that that is going to build up. Uh, you can build things, you know. Um and I think that is, that is incredible. I, I can't even... I'm wrapping my head around this one. And uh, they're showing demos of... of You're walking around the phone and your calendars and everything are on your wall. And, and, and Today, Microsoft like had a... Stark world. Holographs in your living room or whatever space and, and you're in really using a crazy like, headset. Now, Microsoft didn't let us film or take pictures of anything that we saw with HoloLens, but we got to try it and it was pretty great. We saw a demo of Minecraft and it was wild. You put these things on and you look down at the table and there's a castle just sitting on the table made out of Minecraft blocks. And you can look around it and there's no lag. Everything reacts to your head movements as though it were real. Uh, they obviously look like digital objects, it's not like photorealistic, but it was kind of incredible. Um, there was a Skype demo where you would do a Skype call and there would be a little window hanging out with the head that you were talking to the person, and he was looking at it on a surface and he could literally draw on top of 
the world that I was looking at on top of the real world. So uh, they did a walkthrough where they helped us like install a new light switch. And so there are these wires sticking out of the wall and he would like circle the wire and say, take this wire here and connect it to this screw here on the thing that I'm actually holding. It was a really smart way to use the technology, really something I didn't uh, expect for the thought through that well. Um, but what they haven't thought through is all the gestures. You can look around to point to things and you can tap, they call it an air tap. Um, and that's a different one. We've been seeing these little bits um, um, over the last several months, we're seeing apps, unfortunately, for Windows users pop up more on our iPhones and our Android devices than, than the Windows, because that's where the audience is. They're not afraid. They're not going to push it, you know, to a fault, their own thing, even though it's not catching on with Windows Phone. Um, their devices are slick. Uh, the, the Microsoft Surface is a pretty device. And as much as, you know, I... you. I, I hold a MacBook on a pedestal pedestal of design or a Mac, uh, an iPad. A Surface Pro is is a very obtainable computer for me um, and useful to a certain. And, and a lot of times it's like, yeah, it's running Windows, you know. And, and but that is the greatest experiment. Uh, when the next preview comes out, um, I of course got this running on my MacBook Pro in a dual boot. I don't think I'm ready to throw it on my Windows 8 laptop, um, but I love the idea that my Windows 8 touch screen laptop is going to be updated this thing, and I want to be able to check it out full seam. Going to check out the uh, well, the Xbox stream is probably only going to work on one. I only have a 360, um, but very very excited about this. Um, we didn't even talk about you can put PowerPoint on Xbox. I know that doesn't sound exciting, but it kind of is. Think about your Xbox One. Um, becoming a more full-featured uh, Apple TV you can put in a conference room. And maybe play a little Forza when the when the boss is away. Anyways, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, Sorgatron.com. Please subscribe to everything. we got links over there at Sorgatron.com under the posts. Uh, please let me know. What do you think about the new Microsoft? Are you switching back? Are you glad you're there? I know we got a Microsoft lover that's going to love this version of the cast. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good morning. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.